Well, before we start mixing, we want to make sure that we have everything set up properly and we're good to go. And uh, we did some checks already, but now we want to make sure we're going to go faster. We're going to make sure we're going at a fast pace so that the system can react to us adding more plugins or wanting to do some more changes to our regions in our regions um, editing system right here. As you can see, we're going to edit page. I'm going to add some regions up. We want to add some uh, power, or we may also just want to take those plugins and apply them to regions. Well, first off, we want to check out our power. So we're going to go right here to our setup. We're going to go to Playback Engine. Now here in Playback Engine, you'll notice we have a buffer size. And we can go from our 46 uh, sample rate up to 2048 here on my Mac. Now my Mac set up as dual core uh, system, so you just have two processors. So buffer size really relates to, um, I guess, in terms of the smaller size, meaning the computer can eat up at least 64 samples. It's really fast, so it's smaller bytes. And it requires more power to eat up the bigger bytes. So uh, we use a smaller size here for us. Let's say, for example, I was recording something. I'm recording a couple tracks here, a couple tracks, maybe eight tracks. I will use a buffer size here of 64 or a little bit higher. I may go to uh, 256 for my buffer size when I'm going to record. When I'm mixing, I want a higher buffer size. So I use bigger chunks. I want to be able to like uh, use my RTAS and my plugins. So I may want to use more of a buffer size so I'll have no problems. I'm going to have these error messages coming up. Another thing I'm going to use also is our processors. Now here I have one, I have two processors here, one and two. See that right there? And you may have up to eight processors in your system, depending on your core system that you're using. And if you have the more processors you have, uh, the better it is for you to actually um, use your processors to keep your CPU usage up, and that way you'll have less error runs. So here I'm using two processors, and I also have my CPU to about 85. Sometimes I'll go to maybe 75, I don't need that much at all for some smaller sessions, and bigger sessions I will stay at 85 just to make sure I have enough power. I do not want errors on a run through very smoothly. So be aware of that, and you can play around with your CPU usage. Um, just run through your session and see what works best for you in that session. Now also we have here is our RTAS engine. Now, uh, we have some errors that could happen sometimes while we're actually doing a mix or it may slow down. So what I'm trying to do, I'll turn this on. I'll check this. And this is to ignore errors during playback and record. And I make those pops and clicks. You may get some pops and clicks in there, little snaps, crystal pops. If you do, you can go here and select minimize additional I.O. latency. And that's important to do that when you're mixing. Uh, I myself do this all the time when I'm mixing or sometimes recording. So I want to get a really smooth playback, particularly I'm doing background vocals or doing vocals, so you're actually hear it back and make it much easier. But I also tend to turn it off when I'm going to do the final mix. I'm going to mix up, get my final mix going, and I want to take it and make this file. Maybe making an MP3 or maybe making a bounce file for a CD or whatever. I'll turn this off because that way we'll have no pops and clicks, and the system will run smoothly straight through without having to compensate for me to get some extra power through my RTAS engine. Now next we're going to talk about our DAE, Playback Buffer, okay? Now this is right here, so our Playback Buffer right here. Now this has to do generally with our disk drive, with how fast it's running in our RAM, whether we have enough RAM in there to uh, store that random memory in as we run through our system and we run through our mix here. Now you'll generally use this, let's say for example, if I have a really great fast hard drive that does about maybe 10,000 RPMs, that's a really fast hard drive. So that's a very little latency. So I like to use a, that's pretty good if I have that kind of hard drive. But generally, if you're on a laptop, your hard drive speeds won't be approaching that. You know, unless you've got one installed that's 10,000 RPM. But what you want to do, you know, is to maximize it. So I go into my default, which is about 1,500 milliseconds, which is this level two, which you can see right there. Or if I need more power, I want to use more of that RAM along with the hard drive. Uh, what happens is the lower values of this disk buffer will reduce the disk latency. And the higher ones will improve my disk performance, though. So this higher level here, level 2, will give me better disk um, dis performance, but I will have this um, system uh, that will respond a little bit less, less responsive to what I'm doing. And that's important to realize. So in my case, we're going to keep it here at level 2 and keep my cache size large, which I like a lot. Okay, now once I'm there, I'm ready to go. I want to go to my next thing here I want to talk about, which is we're going to talk about more about our RTAS and, and about how we can use uh, the effects. So I'll go back here 
And for example, you see I have some effects here on this wah, for example. I've got this effect right here, right? And I got the same effect here. So what I could do sometimes, instead of using these plugins and saying I want to use these RTAS plugins here on this wah, I may want to say, you know, instead of using the plugins, maybe I just want to keep it, you know? So what I'll do is here, I'll say I want to apply this plugin to the waveform. And then that way I can get rid of the plugins and it'll be in the waveform itself, which will be in the region. I'll go to here to my librarian preset and I go to copy settings. Let's close this window right here. I'll open up my edit window and I'll select the Y sound. So let's take this one right here. And this is for example, and I'll select this sound here and say, for example, I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to my audio suite. I'm going to go to my EQ 3 band right there. See that right there? I can go to here and I can go to paste. Paste settings. See now it appears right there now. Now I can take it and process that track. I can select that track I want to process and select it and process that track out. So what I'll do is here I can process and see that track changed. You can see that track changed right there. And since that track changed, now, as you can see here, it says 1EQA. See that? So the name of the file changed as well once I process that track. What this does, though, I can now eliminate those plugins on the WA track, the 2EQ plugins. And it'll be actually on the region, which will increase the amount of power I have to run the system, which is much, much better for me if I want to just, you know, use more power. And I'll hear it back. I'll listen back to it. I'll say to myself, I want to make sure it's got a great enough sound for me so it sounds good enough compared to what I didn't have before. And once I like the process I did, it's good to go. I'm going to undo that right now. I'm not going to do that for now. But when you're doing that, be aware also as well as that, for example, here, you can go back in and you may want to duplicate. I can maybe duplicate this one track here and call it. See, that says 01. And I duplicate that track. See that? And now I can process it and compare the two if I wanted to. I can say, okay, I want to process this one. And I'll process it. It's processed. And I can always go back to the original. See? And I can switch between the two. It says normal right there, as you can see. And I can go back to the other one here. And this is the one that's processed. And it says 1EQA. And that way I have it in there to use it. And if not, I can always go back to the original at the same time for my playlist, which you can see right there. Here go back to the original for us. And this is a great way to save on your uh, CPU power as well. Now what I like to do also too is to go to my, right back here to our, our window here, I'm going to go to system usage. See this? And here we can see how much power is going on here. You can see, well, if it gets too much here, you know you got too much power. You can see how much CPU RTAS power using. In this case right now, if I play this song here, let me turn this off right now, and we'll play it back from the top. And we see that the CPU is right here. And it's the district on the bottom half right there, where it says 4%. Up here we have CPU is right here where it says 5%. So if you've got too many plugins sometimes, not enough power in your system, you'll notice that. And you can come here and you can say, okay, I see what the problem is. And you can turn some of that off also as well. You say, well, look, I don't need this here. I'll uh, apply this plugin to that particular region. That way it makes it easier. Another way to do this too, if you have a lot of regions, let's say, and you'll see here that I have a lot of regions here, you may want to just consolidate all the regions to one actual region. You can consolidate regions that way sometimes. It'll free up power rather than the computer keep looking for this region, that region, that region. Particularly when you have a lot of tracks. Um, your computer will be looking to find out, okay, search for this region, search for that region, get this region, and it slows it down somewhat. If it's one solid region, it can see it and say, okay, this is what I'm going to use from the beginning to end. I know where it starts and stops at. But this all depends on the power within your system as well. So be aware of that. So you need to consolidate regions, do it. Now, um, sometimes if you're going to mix on an HD system, that power is going to already be sent to the cars in the HD system. 
So you don't have to worry too much about that. That's why sometimes I'll take an LE system and go to an HD project and mix it. But be aware, you know, some of the best records recorded over the years have been on a really small system. There wasn't even this big uh, in-a-box computer system going on back then. So really, once you get down to a decent size, not much to complain about. you got a really great system to work with. In today's market, these great systems like Pro Tools can do a lot of work for you. So let's get started mixing. And remember, we just talked about prep your session and also get the system run as fast as possible because we're going to use some of these RTAS plugins as we start to mix.